Hello everyone. Today I will speak about the Egyptian civilization. The ancient Egypt, which was known as the gift of the Nile by the Greek historian Herodotus. The Egyptian civilization was located on the banks of the Nile River. The Nile Valley where the Egyptian civilization flourished was a long narrow plain. During rains every year the river would overflow its banks and flood the valley completely. When the flood receded it deposited a rich black soil over the land and the soil was fertile in which crops grew easily. Agriculture therefore became the main occupation of the Egyptians. As far as the political framework is concerned, it started with the pharaoh which was the top of the social hierarchy. Next to him were the most powerful officers known as the wazirs who were the executive heads of the bureaucracy. Under them were the high priests followed by the royal overseers who were the administrators and who ensured that 42 district governors carried out the pharaoh's orders. At the bottom of the hierarchy were the scribes, artisans, farmers and laborers. The social structure consisted of the upper class, the middle class and the lower class. The upper class consisted of the members of the royal family, the rich land owners, high priests and the government officials. The middle class was made up of merchants, manufacturers, artisans or craftspersons. The ordinary priests were also the members of this class and the lower class mainly consisted of the farmers, the unskilled workers and the slaves. The slaves were considered to be the prisoners of the war and they had no rights. The family life of the Egyptians now from the upper class lived lives of luxury and pleasure. They participated in hunting, fishing and fowling expeditions as is clear from the pictures. Occupations consisted of agriculture mainly and the domestication of animals. They grew barley, wheat and millets. They also grew dates, apples, figs and peaches. They domesticated animals and they used them for many purposes and the livestock was supplied the meat, the milk, hide and dung which is to be used for the cooking fuel. Food and crops. Now the principal food crops were barley and emmer wheat that was used to be the long wheat and they were used to make beer and bread. It was supplemented by fish, fowl and meat. The houses they were made up of bricks dried out in the sun and the windows were small and high up the windows and doors were the wooden shutters. Wealthy families had large houses and the poor had small houses with four rooms shared with the domesticated animals. You can see alongside the pictures of the uh, the rooms, the houses of the poor people, the oil lamps were used for lighting the homes. As far as the shelter of the rich families was concerned, the royal palaces, they were like small cities built magnificently with separate residences for the royals, a temple and the workers' a village. As far as the dresses were concerned, they wore white simple dress which was made up of linen. The rich wore fine woven linen and the male, they wore linen clothes from the waist to the knees. The upper class also wore skirts. Women wore simple white tight fitting clothes and the rich ladies, they, they also wore shawls. Egyptians also wore sandals made up of leather or reed. 
they were extremely fashionable people and they were extremely image conscious and interested in fashion they wore earrings bracelets rings necklaces as is very much visible in the pictures jewelry was made up of gold and also decorated with stones they used eye makeup and oil and believed that makeup had magical and healing powers so the clothing and jewelry is very much clear in the pictures where the necklaces of different kinds are shown transport and trade involved ships and boats they were the chief means of transporting people small boats you can see alongside is known as the felucca and the right hand side are the barges they were the big flat bottomed boats used to transport goods and also people script was hieroglyphic and the egyptians first used these hieroglyphics only for the inscriptions carved and painted them on temple walls they were also used on tombs and sheets of papyrus this civilization was known for its pyramids temples architecture mummification and astronomy these people they believed in gods and many gods they were around 2000 gods and goddesses in egypt and ancient egyptians were polytheistic some of the main gods were re the sun god osiris the god of underworld and resurrection and isis was the wife of osiris the most beautiful monuments as far as architecture and engineering is concerned till today you can find sphinx the mythical figure the great pyramid of giza and the step pyramid at sakara these beautiful monuments are still present in egypt the paper and the ink the paper that came from the word papyrus a water reed they used to they used to write on such paper and egyptians also used ink which was made up of soot gum and water the ancient egyptians calendar had a year that was 365 days long and the egyptian civil calendar was divided into 12 months of 30 days and there were five extra days to the calendar at the end of the year for the celebration of the religious festivals as far as mathematics is concerned these people calculated numbers based on the decimal they had separate symbols for them and egyptians knew about addition and subtraction they had some basic knowledge of geometry and they used this knowledge in the construction of gigantic pyramids so they were really intelligent people as far as death was concerned in egyptian religion they believed in the concept of death after life they practiced mummification that is they after the death of a person they would remove the organs and preserve the bodies by putting some oil and then uh, putting some spices on it rubbing it off and then putting the linen cloth over it tightly and preserving it in the tombs they believed that souls traveled to the afterlife and that's why they gave importance in preserving the bodies of the dead egyptian civilization declined by 1000 bce foreign invasions and internal revolts weakened the civilization and sealed its fate I hope you've understood this lesson on Egyptian civilization. Thank you. Yo, happy preschool. Thousands of years ago, 
Egypt was home to one of the richest and most powerful civilizations in the world. Their art and culture continues to fascinate people even today, and one of the most impressive legacies they left behind is their pyramids. The Great Pyramid of Giza is the only surviving wonder of the ancient world, and the complex of pyramids and other structures on the Giza Plateau near Cairo, Egypt, is a World Heritage Site for its importance to history. You might be surprised to learn that these famous pyramids are not the only pyramids in Egypt. In fact, there are more than a hundred of them, most much smaller than the Great Pyramid, and many very damaged. Ancient Egyptians believed that after death, people would continue to live very much like they had when they were alive, and so they buried people with things that they thought they would need. At first, people were buried in the dry desert sand, but the graves were dug up by wild animals and people who wanted to steal the things they were buried with. Egyptians began to build flat tombs, called mastabas, out of mud bricks or stone. Then, about four and a half thousand years ago, an architect named Imhotep had the idea to build a stack of mastabas on top of each other, each one smaller than the last. The result was what we call a step pyramid, a giant stairway meant to help the soul of the pharaoh climb into the heavens. So began a period of nearly a thousand years of pyramid building in Egypt. After the first step pyramids were constructed, a pharaoh named Snefru decided that he wanted a smooth-sided pyramid for his tomb. This proved difficult to accomplish, and Snefru had three pyramids built before he was satisfied. This third pyramid, the Red Pyramid, is believed to be the first true pyramid built in Egypt. The pharaoh who followed Snefru Khufu decided to build his own pyramid, bigger and better than the Red Pyramid. The result was the Great Pyramid of Giza, the largest pyramid ever built. Construction of the Great Pyramid likely took between 10 and 20 years. It was originally 481 feet or 146.5 meters high making it the tallest man-made structure on Earth for nearly 4,000 years. The building of such an enormous pyramid was a monumental feat. People have wondered for thousands of years how it was possible to build something so huge with the technology available to the ancient Egyptians. The Great Pyramid is estimated to be made of 2.3 million blocks of stone. The largest of these blocks weigh between 25 and 80 metric tons and were transported from more than 500 miles or 800 kilometers away. The pyramid was originally encased in polished white limestone. Most of these stones have been removed over the millennia, meaning that when the pyramid was new, it would have looked very different than it does today. Khufu had other things built on the Giza Plateau, including two mortuary temples to honor him after his death, and three small pyramids for his wives to be buried in. The other two large pyramids on the Giza Plateau were built by Khufu's son, the pharaoh Khafre, and his grandson, the pharaoh Minkure. Khafre's pyramid complex includes a unique feature, the Great Sphinx, a huge guardian statue with the head of a man and the body of a lion. It is one of the oldest and largest statues in the world, measuring nearly 240 feet or 73 meters long from paw to tail, and 66 feet or 20 meters high. Deep inside the pyramids lay burial chambers for the pharaoh's body, and any treasures and items they would need for the afterlife. The pharaohs knew that their treasure would be desired by robbers, and so they tried to guard it. Sometimes they used fake burial chambers or hidden passages to try and keep thieves out, but unfortunately, most of their treasures were stolen long ago. Still, 
the pyramids themselves remain and stand as monuments to these long dead pharaohs. Millions of people visit them each year to marvel at the ancient tombs and learn about the history of Egypt. I hope you enjoyed learning about Egyptian pyramids today. Goodbye till next time.